Greetings, YouTube. This is Yvette. Welcome to our channel. Um, I'm loading a video now because I'm in the, in the video that I'm uploading right now. I'm talking about attacks from the enemy. Get ready for them. Um, but this is a channel about fasting. We're getting ready to fast. We are uh, believers who are walking in our calling. We know who we are in God. We, we're not afraid of the enemy. We take authority over him. We take our rightful place, dominion that Jesus gave back to us, the kingdom he gave it back to us. So you know what, you guys, we are part of the kingdom of God. We are blessed to be able to tap into blessings that God intended for us in the first place. Blessings from on high, highly favored, we are a royal priesthood. We are kings and priests. So when that is the case, listen, we live that way on earth. So even though we're in this earthly domain, we are a select group of people who get to tap into the promises that God gave us as if we were in heaven, okay? Because we get to taste of heavenly gifts. Now, today I went to um, the Back to Eden Garden. So I told you guys in another video that someone shared with me about, oh, you ought to check out Back to Eden and because I wanted to do a garden. But I will tell you that for probably the last 10 years, I've been wanting to do a garden or longer. And I didn't like the fact that I have to water it, till it, weed it. I hate all that. That's too much work. This garden I went to today, you guys, you guys, you guys, it's on video, okay? Somebody posted a video, but this time I'm put a link in the bottom so you can see the video. Listen. I went there, I saw with my own eyes. So first of all, this man is so sweet and so humble and so blessed of God. I don't know how many acres he has up there, but this man is blessed of God. He prayed about it and talked to the Lord about this garden, like why he had to do, you know, it was just too, it was too hard for him. And God started showing him things and he ties it into scripture. Listen. I have never in my life seen so much fruit on branches. I've never seen apple trees so full. And he prunes them, the middle part. There's nothing in the middle. You know, like most of the time, if you go by an orchard, they have a tree that's perfectly shaped and it has, you know, fruit on all the branches. This guy has nothing in the middle of his tree. It literally, actually, his, his tree actually looks like a hand. There is nothing here. And he has um, branches that hang down to the ground. You just go pick his fruit. It is, every branch on the thing is so heavy. It's hanging down with fruit. I mean, there were plum trees, pear trees, apple trees. All of them just had fruit hanging everywhere. He had strawberries that were growing that were so sweet. He plants under trees. So the way he does it is he mimics like a like a forest. When you go to the forest, the trees are green all and there's stuff growing underneath the trees, all the vegetation under uh, in the forest, the bushes and bushels and all those other things that grow, they're all growing. He literally plants things underneath his fruit trees. He has stuff growing everywhere, full sun, shade, you name it. So we got to taste the fruit. It was all all the vegetables well not the fruit the fruit wasn't ripe yet so i'm going to come back in september when he says it's ripe but i'm going to bring some ladies from my church because they have to see that it's, this is the blessing to hear him when he talks because as he talks he's teaching he's talking about how adam when he was in the garden how he sinned and god put him out of the garden and adam knew how the garden was taken care of before but when he sinned and was put out of the garden adam started taking the cover cover off of the soil and began tilling and made this whole big old mistake this is adam and he teaches that because adam was under the curse um he did that he 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 messed up things he said so we don't need to do that excuse me i was drinking a lot of water because for some reason i was so dehydrated today even though he had water i was so busy talking and looking and tasting stuff i didn't get to hydrate Okay, so then he talks about how, because um, I, I, I said to him, I said, well, in the Bible, the children of Israel, they were commanded to let the soil rest the seventh year. This man does nothing to his farm, okay? He doesn't do anything to it. He doesn't water it. Well, no, no, he does very little, very little. He will prune the trees. He does do grafts because he grafts 
several varieties. So on his apple tree, he puts a couple different varieties in there so that they cross pollinate so he doesn't have to depend on bees to do the pollination. He says when the wind blows, it causes them to the flowers to touch each other and they pollinate and he has he's full of fruit. You guys, I've never saw some so much fruit and all of it was full of juiciness. It wasn't like um, like my daughter likes sugar snap peas. He has sugar snap peas. These things are so big. He doesn't use any fertilizers. Uh, no, no chemical fertilizers. No, um, oh, what are the, what are, I don't know what commercial people do. No pest control. None of that does he do. He uses wood chips. You guys have to watch the video and, do, and, and, and see it. He's even more amazing in person. One of the things that bothered me about the tour, because he gives a tour on Sundays, is that he'll say, go taste, go try this and go try that. He's so full of information. You don't want to try the stuff because when you go walk away, he, somebody might ask him a question and he's sharing so much. He was just nothing but wisdom. I so appreciated that he was walking in his calling, in his calling. Everybody has a job on planet earth to do in the kingdom. Okay. In the kingdom while we're down here. And so all I could see is that how God was opening up and showing us. And so when I told him about what well, the children of Israel um, had to let the land rest, he said, you know, the problem was they're under the curse. He said, I'm not, I'm not under the curse. We have been set free. And he talks about this and teaches it. And so I believe that most of the people who were there were Christians because they, uh, I think that most of them were Christians. Some looked a little different, you know, like remember I was talking um, in this video that I'm uploading I'm talking about how some Christians don't really look like look like Christians. They don't really act like Christians. There were some of those that were kind of, you could see that pride demon that hangs around on some of them. I could see that. It was a couple that was there. And it looked like to me that she had facelifts because you know how when they get a facelift, all this gets um, lifted and it's still wrinkled, but she looks, the face looks really tight. She was um, doing her best to flash her ring. I mean, just was doing different things. She was an older lady that was trying to be younger. So it was a little different, but I could tell something wasn't right about her. She was asking questions about the garden, but she was still in that little pride thing. Remember, that's what we, we breaking down. We ain't trying to hang with pride. It don't matter. I mean, when I was married, I had a big old fat rock on my finger, but you know, and I suppose I could put it on now, but for what? For what? No need in trying to sport all that. But anyway, um, it was a beautiful visit. The man was so humble. Oh, he was so sweet and humble. And he was so sweet to me. You guys, I was the only darkie there. It, my color didn't matter to him at all. He was so nice. He would tell me to try things. He said, do you eat eggs? And I was like, yeah. He said, well, you got to go get some from my chicken coop. And I was like, are you trying to tell me to eat an egg right here? Like a raw egg. And everybody started cracking up. Uh, but I just kind of teased around with him, but he was so nice. You guys, so nice. People from all the over the world go to his farm to go look at it and what he's doing. I am so stoked, you guys. He taught us how to use what God puts in on the forest floor, the all the um the 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 parts of the tree that die down and the vegetation that die down. It just goes and decomposes into the soil and feeds the soil. That's what he does for his garden, and he doesn't have a problem with weeds. He, I told him that I had tilled my yard up and I wanted to get ready for a garden. He said, well, do you have any weeds down? Any weeds? I said, yeah, they're starting to pop up through. So you have to put paper down or cardboard or something to cover over the weeds, put compost down, let it do its work. So if I get it down now, I'm not compost, but I have to put down the wood chips where he, where I get broken up branches and trees and leaves. And a lot of times cities, he tells you where to get it from. A lot of times cities are trimming trees and they, you know, chop that stuff up and they need a place to take it or the tree service needs a place to take it. And they'll gladly dump it in your yard for, you know, on your um, driveway or whatever. And you go shovel it. I'm, I want them to come. So I'm going to get my yard ready with flatten it out, get some cardboard and we're going to start getting ours ready so that we can get that stuff to break down for next year so that I can um, start growing. So he told me if I water it, once I put the wood chips down, if I water it, it'll speed the process up of decomposing because what I want it to do is break down enough so that I can plant in it next year. And he said, it's going to be full of nutrients. I'm like, Jesus, God, this is nobody but you. But this is what I'm saying that as we're fasting, God is going to begin to bless us and bring us closer to him 
and to his principles. So now he's showing us how, look, this is how it was in the garden. There wasn't a problem. So um, I took care of everything. And this is what the man said. He said, the birds don't toil. They don't you know, the flowers, none of that. So why you're more important than that. So why you don't need to do that either. I'll take care of everything you need. So when we were talking about the seven year thing, he said, well, how can I let this rest? He said, I don't do anything, but just let it grow. He said, I would have to go through and pull all the fruit off and throw it away. If, if I let, let it, rest. how can it rest? It doesn't rest when you're not under the curse. God continues to bring you overflow. The man has overflow, overflow. He has so much fruit and vegetables up there. He cannot eat it all. He gives it away free. So if you go up there, you can take whatever you want. You can taste what you want, take some home. But the only thing is it's not going to last long because it's, and it's got nutrients in it. Uh, everything I tasted was different than what was at the store. You guys, I'm stoked. I am shopping in the store for no vegetables. After this, I'm going to grow the ones that I eat. So the stuff that me and my daughter buy at the store, we're going to grow it in the ground. So uh, I'm so stoked, you guys. I'm so stoked about walking our calling. I'm excited about our fast because um, I believe God's going to continue to pour into us continue to take us higher and higher, okay? So be prepared for the attacks from the enemy. Don't fall faint because he's going to manifest by acting up, cussing you out, all kinds of stuff um, to uh, try and scare you because he's on his way out. You just cast him out, okay? I'm gonna sign off because I know this is a long video, but if you get a chance, watch the link. So I'm gonna post the link Please look at this guy. And I'm telling you the way he, I was blessed when I watched the video. I was so blessed. I was like, I got to go see him. And he tells you almost the same thing you get on the video, but it was a different feeling being up there. It made my day. I drove for four hours up there, went to the tour and came straight back for, I was, I'm tired. I've been up there all day. So I got back here about nine, just before nine o'clock. That's a long day just doing the road and I was getting sleepy on the road, but I'm telling you it was worth every bit of it. And he accepts donations. Um, so I was asking him, I said, well, it says you take donations, but I don't see your donation box. And he sticks his hand out. I look, I had planned. I brought a five and a 20 and I had planned to give him a five. Cause you know, if you go in a museum, museum, $5 ought to be okay. No, I always, I want to have a few dollars to myself. So I gave him the 20. It was well worth it. And I don't normally pay $20 for tickets to get in somewhere. I was like, I don't need to see that because I don't like spending that much money. But some concerts I'll pay for, like Michael McDonald and Chaka Khan are coming into town. I'm going to watch them because this is back when music was clean. No, no cuss words and stuff. So I am going to see them. And that cost me like, what, 50? I think the ticket was like $48. Then you had to pay a handling fee. So it ended up being like 50 some dollars. But that for me is worth it. It's a concert, but and norm, but normally other stuff I don't pay that for. So I'm, I'm saying that to say this, that the man blessed me. You guys, he blessed me to the point where I'm going to bring the ladies from my church up there. They got to see this. You got to hear the message because the man has a message from God. It is, and he kept, maybe he was so in tune with me on the tour because I knew what he was talking about. I knew, you know, I knew scripturally what he was talking about. So um, I knew because remember I told you guys God had poured it into me. He was talking about some stuff and I knew. So he was really, um, con I was, con we were connected. Let's put it that way. Spiritually, there was a connection because he's walking his calling. I'm put, I'm doing my calling. I'm pushing it. And you know what I'm saying? So it was a, it was a, an amazing day for me today. Okay. I was very blessed and I, I'm going to put this man in my prayers. Because I'm like, God, I know you're blessing him, but bless him even more. Pour into him even more. Heal his body. His legs are having a problem. He has a problem walking. You guys, our channel, I want you guys to watch the video and pray for him. Pray for his healing supernaturally. I'm going to write him a letter and tell him that our channel is going to pray for him and his healing supernaturally on his legs. I'm believing God. I am believing God for that man's healing. Okay? All right, I'm going to sign off. He doesn't do video. He doesn't do um, Facebook or none of those uh, um, social media. He doesn't do email, no 
uh, texting. He don't even own the cell phone. Imagine that. He doesn't own a cell phone. You can only write letters to him. So I am going to write him a letter and tell him, you guys, look, going with me on this and pray for him. His, his name is Paul uh, Gauchi or something. I'll put the link up and you'll be able to see it, but watch it and pray for him on our fast. Okay, let's believe God for a miracle. I'm going to tell him we're praying for him and including him with our fast and I'm expecting a miracle. Okay. All right. I'm going to sign off you guys. Um, if you're new to the channel, listen, subscribe because we are all about walking in our authority. We're all about being down and serious for God. Warriors. Okay. Soldiers but more than conqueror soldiers because the Lord is on our side, okay? We're on the Lord's side and he is, it's his battle and we already won. We just need to walk in it and take our stance, okay? All right, I'm gonna sign off you guys because I'm so tired, I wanna get in the bed, all right? I'll see you tomorrow, bye-bye.